out being video tonight. If anyone has any uh, special uh, reason not to be on the film, or Guys, I'm using when I come out with the bats. <laughs> 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 so, anybody else wants to cover up that spine too? Uh, just as we get started, I do want to mention that we, for our final numbers for the year, for the North End, our overall top one prime is down 10%. So, for the, yeah. so, for that neighborhood, for our neighborhood in the North End, that's great. They have a 10% decrease. Uh, unfortunately, the rest of the di district didn't fare as well as the rest of the district won. We actually bought we're up 7% we the rest of the district. A lot of losses on uh, the north end, on the same over here, we did excellent with a 10% uh, decrease. During the last 30 days, I'm just going to go through the totals, and then we're going to have uh, Teddy, as usual, go through the reports. For the North End, there were no homicides, there were no sexual assaults, there were no robberies, there were no aggravated assaults, there were no breaking and entering, which we haven't had that for a long time, but there was zero in the 30-day period. So that's, again, the, num the numbers are, are good. There were five auto thefts. We're going to talk about the auto thefts when Teddy goes through the reports. Uh, a couple of the people that are leaving keys, leaving the car running, which we all do when it's cold, when it's freezing. But, you know, your vehicle is subject to theft when, you, when you're leaving it outside with the keys in it, and, and it's running. And they will grab it, and, and they will. Um, we had three general larcenies, that's down to eight from the same period last year. We had one larceny from Morgan, we had eight from the same period last year. We had no reported for Katie. No community disorder incidents. The police towed nine motor vehicles. We issued 56 motor vehicle violations and 250 parking citations. For the neighborhood, for the last 30 days, there were only two arrests, and they were both for disturbing the peace. I'm sure if any can touch on those. Uh, is that that same party? Yeah, the two parties. Teddy will you know, stop at those, Teddy. Yeah, the two arrests was uh, this December the 6th, the, uh, that was at um, Prince and Salem, and that was the, um, he was, uh, actually the guy was around all day, he was, disru he was disruptive in the neighborhood, and actually Sergeant Lima came upon him, and um, two of the officers, that the day. And, uh, so that was huge, so he put up a fight and he was arrested at um, <coughs> Prince and Salem. What did you tell people he had a gun inside the store? Yeah. He, he basically, store? Well, he, he walked into the store basically, he threatened that he had a gun, he wanted food. And <coughs> the guys who worked in the store ran out of the store. And uh, uh, on the on the, on the the back side, and he, I ended up getting on the call a little bit early. I went down um, Prince, and right when I flew by that guy, I knew that had to be the guy calling for a backup. They uh, <coughs> came up at a... Uh, just before he got up to Prince and commercial and ran back up there with another guy, I beat him. And uh, he was arrested. He's from like Western Mass, I guess the address on But uh, a, I think at the time he was being treated for the, uh, well, it's another story. I think he was being treated for some uh, some ailments, we'll leave it at that. Uh, but a pretty scary guy that you would never, for the most part, ever see in the North End. It just happened to be that he was spotted earlier in the day. I uh, was rather intoxicated when we came upon him, but uh, you know, he, he did go with us, so, and uh, we got him back to the station. And they wound up having four warrants on him. Yeah. I'm not sure. And do I get credit for you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Is that your first five he gave, he gave up That's his first arrest, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Seven years. Quite a while. And they had, the, the second arrest disturbing the peace was on the 23rd of December. 22 chief. The officers could call for a wild party that was out of control. 
and the, uh, they wouldn't disperse. So finally they broke it up and got them downstairs and they were, uh, they were older, they were young professionals. And uh, one was arrested for disturbing the peace and the tenant is being summoned in for a keeper of a disorderly house. And that was our <coughs> chief student at 2.23 a.m. How old was that guy? That, uh... 28. 28. How about the other one? Was there two on there? Yeah, they're both 28. Both 28? Yeah. Were you up at that one, Richie? No, no, I was wrapping Christmas stuff. Oh, we were wrapping. <laughs> 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 Steve Charles. Okay. Yeah, and this, this is a 28. <laughs> this is one of those guys where he, uh, he claimed to have uh, connections, that he knows people. They put it right in the report. That he knows people. <laughs> Sixth of December, and that was um, at, uh, on Salem Street. The businessman left his That's van running. Because right. you guys were here on that night. Yeah, that was Sixth yeah. of December. Yeah, that was the right. Take care. <laughs> the, uh, he left him, his van running, his work van running, and the guy jumped in and stole it. Oh, that was like he yeah. called us. Yeah, he called us at the station right after it happened. Right. The next one was um, on uh, the 7th, on um, 107 Atlantic Ave. He double parked his car, ran in the building, and left the keys in the ignition. That was stolen and recovered in Charlestown. The, um, on the 10th, at Charter Street, the, the individual, he actually forgot where he parked his car. So we reported it stolen. So the, the officers find the car once you go over. He actually realized he forgot. And the um, next one was on the 60, uh, 64 North margin. He's reporting his came into the station. The report is uh, 1999 Jeep Cherokee was uh, was stolen, and that one actually was recovered in Charlestown on Rutherford Ave. The following day, okay. and the last one, the fifth one, was um, on the 17th, 89 Fleet Street. He uh, bought his uh, BMW 2002 BMW Series 3, and he came back out and in the morning it was gone. And no, no sign of toes, so it went down as a um, stolen car, and as of today, was not recovered. We're looking in child stuff for that kind of thing. Yeah, yes, that's the police just go straight to town. Right. 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 Again, he was arrested what, last year. Yeah, He's um, he broke into my house in Dorchester in '85. <laughs> he's still doing. He's still. He's, he's, yeah, he's, a, he's his two brothers, Richard. Yeah, and, he, he's uh, like his name, yeah. but he's uh, got a thing for churches. Oh, he, oh that guy he, he did it against Tilton. Yeah. Action church. He does. He does. He's done it. You know, watch him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he just got out. Yeah, he just got out. Yeah, he just been out recently. And he's back at it. He did Art Street again, and he did St. Leonard's stuff. And, uh, I don't know if we picked him up. What's the date on that one? I don't know if we picked him up again. Yeah, this is December, right? I don't know if we've got him again since, uh, since this one. Yeah. He's been around a long time. Uh, the second one was on the 15th of December, about 12.30 a.m. at Princeton Hanover. This one. The girl was walking in, down the street, and then an hour later, she could, thought somebody took her bag off her shoulder. So she reported it. Um, yeah, they, she, oh, she, she, then she said later she thinks she might have left it someplace, though. I think we, yeah. She forgot. 
Charlotte Summers. And the third was on the 17th at Atlantic Ave, last year building. And this one, a, a fellow came in and asked the hostess for an application for a job. She turned to get one and he took her uh, iPhone off the uh, desk at the front door. So her iPhone went out the door. What number Atlantic Ave? 100 Atlantic. Just as an uh, establishment. Uh, is that the living room? I thought it was one a week. I think it is the living room. Uh, and we had the, um, which was great, the one car break that was on the 9th, the 10th, excuse me, of December at Two Battery Walk. And um, this out-of-state woman parked in the garage to stay in the hotel, and she said that um, someone stole $10,000 out of her car in the garage. That's it. Quiet. Good job. Always been their choice vehicle. Uh, just like certain Hondas, right? You always see the top ten list yeah, of the most yeah. stolen cars. Yeah, and they'll do the Hondas, and for whatever reason, well, but I think because it's they've got a certain skill of doing it. Even in the, the movie, the town. I think it was yours. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for the reports. And and what about because last month there were eleven B and E. And this one, there's nothing. And I just wondered if you, if you, we locked up that uh, Kelly budget the other day, but we got, we, there was an arrest made. Okay. And do, do you think that that's I, most of the explanation? I think we charged him with, I think, three of, of the BMEs, and we suspected in a couple more. Yeah. Yes, I, I absolutely believe that the arrest of the <laughs> suspect put a stop to it. And was that the. Sorry, was, was that the one that, 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 that some of those took place at uh, Prince and Salem? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we, I think we charged him for those three that took place yeah. right there. We did charge him for those, yeah. for those three. He was arrested in the uh, in the South End doing a B and E. Oh wow. Yeah. And we had our warrant already. Uh, the detectives had done a good job. Detective Wilson, Detective Wilson, and the staff had done a good job. Uh, really did. Yeah, he's working. <laughs> when is he getting out? <laughs> and he will walk out to his extra special. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, unfortunately, you know, people do, do get out. Like the gentleman would mention about the church uh, break ins. They, they do get out, and a lot of these guys, people are uh, drug addicted and go right back to uh, what? Yeah. what put them in there. Yeah. 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 They've got no place to put them on. Judge just not doing their jobs. That's a tough question. Yeah, it's tough, though, to say, you know. The other thing is, when people are arrested, they're not convicted. That's why we do we try not to get into these things. They are only arrested, and they have to be proven guilty. And a lot of times they held a bail, and some of them will make bail. 
So these aren't even their sentences, they're just being held pending the trial. And family members, you know, will put up bail for them and then, then they'll be out. That information, unless it's a very violent felon, really a lot of times it doesn't even get back to the detectives of, of District A. I noticed the uh, larceny from motor vehicles is down 15 um, this past year, 2012, compared to 2011. Um, is there anything done in particular that kind of caused that, or is that just one of those things where, hey, sometimes you just go down and you go I think uh, Sasha Lehmer and the staff have done a good job of putting out information to people and telling them not to leave valuables in, in, in the vehicles. That's the most easily prevented crime there is. They only break into cars when they see something in the car. It's, that's what they do. We know that from talking to them. We know that from people who say, oh, I left my you know, laptop, my Apple, iPad, something in, in the vehicle. Plus, we come usually break into them to take it. The, the garage and commercial and friends have been in there numerous times talking to the staff up there. Part of the IRA that we cover, the reporting area, we cover the Clinton State garage. We've talked to them several times. <coughs> and I think just through the course of the meeting with Phil and Matt, you know, just I think with everybody here, I think hopefully the word has gotten out there, you know, that you know, it, like it in the most preventable crime, you leave the items in the car, it's going to get broken into. And we did have a pretty good run considering it was uh, Christmas time. And could it, have I just from, have, have I got too simple an idea from watching too many TV shows? But if it's that common a crime and, and it's so it's so easily preventable. What's the reason that you guys don't put a, a Mac laptop in a car and then sit there with a camera or sit or, or stand in a nearby doorway or whatever and wait for one of these idiots to come along, steal it, and grab it? I mean, if it's if it's that common, which it seems to be, isn't this a good opportunity to uh, do some uh, operations and trick some of these people? If you knew exactly where they were they were doing it, we we've done that before. You can sit on the street all night long with the anti-crime unit, they're looking at, at property. It's tough, a lot of times with stings, they don't pay off in terms of the manpower. You need to have the, somebody as an observer, you need to have an arrest team. It's probably three or four offices and a lot of money. We spend, when we do it, we spend a lot of money, and that's when we're really, if we're really getting nailed on the street, we're gonna do it. We depend, truthfully, on the public. Public's our best ally. People will hear, especially down here, they'll hear something. <coughs> They'll call us, and if we get, you know, we get a good call, we'll get down there and get the person, hopefully. And in, in, further on that, does the, does the camera on the side of the Elliott Street School still work? There is a camera housing there, and it did work a few years ago. When you guys put it in there, or the school board, or somebody put it in there when there were those, that sexual guy was around. Because he attacked somebody. In there. Yeah, I, but I'm not sure if that's still a... Uh, Operational would have to would have to check. Could, could, do you mind checking on it? Yeah. Tell us at the next yeah, we'll that. Uh, Just a note on the uh, on the car breaks. You know, over in uh, I, I know I've said this before. I hate to repeat myself, but at one point in time, we used to get roughly 30 cars stolen a month, and now we've got those numbers down. I'm really too afraid. But what has been up are the uh, the car breaks, and uh, we'll put plackets on the vehicles over there. It's gone out, you know, to the Charlestown Bridge. Uh, I can't say an awful lot of people park over there to come into work, but um, <coughs> we've uh, placed plaquettes, I'd say almost on every single windshield, we'll placket at every single street over there, between the CSO offices, the Open B team offices, uh, you know, in the course of, you know, several years, and those numbers have gone from 30, on most occasions, down to single digits, maybe low teens, and it's like the captain mentioned, sometimes it takes one particular individual to get out of the can before you know it, the, the numbers are back up in the 30s again. So it, it is well, has a lot to do with educating the public. And uh, if the public really does the right thing, uh, you know, even with, I'll uh, give you a quick one, even on uh, B&Es, we had a B&E up on the hill. Uh, four door frames, four door locks. First floor got broken into, a couple responded in the community meeting up there at Beacon Hill. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, the owner landlord very well. He went up there, changed the door frames, the door locks. And even through a little conning them, he actually took uh, some dollars off the, uh, the next month's rent. But we've kind of put it back on him, you know, that you know, job builder. You know, if you had solid doors and if you had good door frames, that door wouldn't have been Jimmy. If you had some plexiglass on your see-through inner door, uh, they wouldn't have kicked in the glass. And he did it. And 
uh, I can't guarantee it's not going to get broken into, but it's, it's it's pretty close to foot notch right now. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I just think that if there's these habitual offenders in Charleston or wherever else they might be, including here in the North End, if you've got one or two of them on one of these sting operations, it might send a real message to them. Yeah, so we tried that once over in Charleston. A lot of people put a lot of effort into it, almost two weeks, a lot of overtime in the budget. And, uh, I don't know if, they, if it was the, those perpetrators were spooked, but she just didn't work for us. Um, remember that guy that was um, caught on camera? He looks right at the camera. He was robbing two or three apartments in one building. Did, did anybody ever recognize him? And yes. He's arrested? Yes. Oh. He's arrested. People did recognize him. That's right. That's the first thing we're talking about. You know, some, put, put our, some of our crime tips, our self-defense safety awareness tips in the regional review. So we'd like to get that information out there. This is one of our tools, and we can thank you for doing that. Uh, that's a great public service to put that information out there. Like that. Anybody else have uh, any... Uh, Yes, I just want to make uh, one comment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to tell everybody because of an incident that happened. And I was woken up out of a dead sleep because my husband, who's the opposite of me, the opposite of me, very calm guy, started screaming out the window and kicked the barrel on him while I'm coming down and kick you. I just want everybody to be aware of you do need a permit for pepper mace, but for wasp and hornet spray that shoots 37 feet, you do not need a permit for them. And if it comes down to push the shove and they are bothering you or bothering your property, spray them right in the face and do whatever you have to do to protect yourself. We do not need their permission. That's all I have to say. Well done. That's no fun. That's well, I got it at home. That's well, it. I, I, was, I received a bug spray email feet. from you. I didn't know. Oh, yeah. I, was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was ready to go that night. I was ready to go. You want to spray yes. someone with bug spray? Yeah, no, the bug oh, well, spray in the right. eye is very effective. 37 feet. It shoots out. Wonderful. Better than the pepper mace. And you guys want to charge $25 for, for the permit. No, no, no. This is for nothing. Yeah. Just want to just, just want to pass it along. Very helpful. The police do not recommend it. I don't care. It doesn't matter what you do. This is a legitimate thing. No one's going around spraying innocent people, nuns and priests and children. These are the dirty misfits and drunks that are disturbing us. He's kicking barrels, are disrupting everybody, breaking coffee. These are the people that should be subjected to this spray. Yes, yes. Yeah, and it's cheap too, under five dollars. Does it work? Yeah. Does it work? Have a couple of cans at your house that they for sale? Oh yes. As a matter of fact, yeah. He's a pretty small one. Yeah. Maybe we should use them on the trash pickers. He's raising his hands, guys. Hello. I didn't know the bug spray caught it. Wonderful. Do you have a question? Because I just heard you say something about trash pickers, so go for it. I said maybe we should use Marie's suggestion on the trash pickers. Spray them? Yeah. We had a complaint of a trash picker that, you know, made a lot of noise. You know, for years now, I take my cans, put them on the side of my building. I went up to every one of the pickers that I could find, and I told them, do not touch the bag. I have to call the police. I'll leave the cans there. Do not open the garbage bags. I mean, I've had luck with that. Yeah. It may not be what everybody wants to do, but stop them from ripping open the yeah. bags. They usually rip low. Yep. And that's how it the animals get in, mess. you know. It, it, it makes it mess. It, 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 it works for me, yeah. it really does. And it's a citywide problem. It's not just the yeah. Oh, no, it, you're right. It is a citywide problem. And we complain to public works, and they say it's a police problem. So whose problem is it to address it? It's not against the law. To, if my barrel's outside. It's not on my property. It's not against the law for someone to go through it and, and take something out of it. Whatever I leave out there is trash and 
Okay. So yeah, they said street. it's our property yeah. until it's picked up. So we could call the police on it. We would tell <coughs> them. Well, it would, it depends on, is it within, on your property? No, 12 inches away from the property, so it's up the sidewalk. It's up the sidewalk. It's, it's at, not your actual property. Well, they don't know that, so I'm going to yeah. tell them that the well, police. <laughs> so <laughs> they don't really keep, know. Keep telling them that, Jenny. Yeah, it's it working. It has it, it's working. Um, but yeah, technically, it's not against the law if it's on the public property. Which you can call the police and say they're still in your property. That's what I mean. Well, it is your property. Until they pick it up. It's no, it, it, once it's out on the public, if I leave something out as trash, I can't say later, oh, that was still my property. It, it's trash. Well, then how can you find it? How can people yeah, find right. the trash? I know. If I leave trash out illegally, how can you find me based on what you just said? It's out in the public street. Well, it's, you put it out there, right? Yeah. You're, 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 you're dumping. You know, it's not saying that you have permission to dump. I'm just saying I don't have an expectation of privacy or the ownership in something I leave on the street. It's not a police responsibility. I'm not That's going right. there. Yeah. Yeah. Say the laws overlap each other. Yeah. yeah. I had a quick question, just from um, common sense and past experience with public safety meetings. I know that. Police enforcement and patrols change accordingly depending on when students, whether they be from Suffolk or any other school permit. Um, winter breaks, um, the end of the semester and school year in May. So now that it's January, things just seem to be up and running again. What, if anything, uh, will be different between now and, I guess, May or June? Well, we'll still be having uh, student patrols, which, which, yes. will be, which will be going out with them, absolutely. That hasn't that has not changed. Uh, yeah, and so th that's going to stay in place, the student patrol. Yeah. Our usual school patrol activities will definitely stay in, stay in place. I, I just wanted to point out to the group the, the headline in the Metro today Man murdered for asking a party goer to be quiet. Yes. Oh, no. yeah, so I, yeah. yeah, so I just wanted to say to the group that, uh, you know, full marks to everybody here for insisting that this is a serious issue. It's not just sort of like a trivial thing that's just sort of a lifestyle concern that people who have nothing better to do with their time can hang around complaining about, which <clears throat> some of the predecessors in the police force have sort of hinted in the past. I'm talking about a few years ago, not you guys, of course. But I'm just saying, this just goes to show this is the only form of pollution that people murder each other for. And it happens all around the world dozens and dozens of times a year. So I just want to say, it, it is. It, I think this shows that the concerns that this group has been voicing are serious ones, and they deserve to be taken seriously, and not just sort of poo-pooed as oh, it's a lifestyle thing, or you know, get serious, something like that. You know, I, I'm not saying you guys think that way because I, I know you don't actually. No, so, yeah, we absolutely don't. We take it seriously, and this is this, that's an area in Brighton where the police have put a lot of effort in, similar to what we've done here, try to put an end to these parties. And this it does show that these things, you know, this is what could happen. Yeah, serious. And it's you know, an unfortunate oh, incident. Where a yeah. young man lost his life, and some other kid who probably doesn't even have a record, I'm sure, just foolishly drunk, stabs the other kid to death during the, during the fight. So, yeah. Well, yeah, we, we've, we've, we've changed actually, uh, I'm glad you reminded me, Tommy. We've, we've actually changed the way we do our police, we call it comm stats, parent statistical analysis meeting that we do for our crime stats. Every six weeks, every station comes in. The captain gets up there and has to answer up for all the problems for his district. You might have seen it on like TV where they used to do it for on NYPD Blue. We we do it here in Boston, and we start those meetings now with quality of life. That's because the mayor wanted he thought the captains do a good job on crime, but he had us in a couple of months ago. He had the captains in and talked to us and said he, he wants us to really focus on quality of life. Because that's what he hears when he goes out to the neighborhood. The people are concerned about the quality of life issues. Noise, students drinking, kids drinking, the type of stuff that goes on. It really disturbs the residents uh, to a great degree. So we've changed the way we do our, our crime analysis meetings, our crime stand meetings. And we start now with the, with the quality of life issues first. So we have we map where the areas are happening. You know, the hot spot, that area was a hot spot. The, the area that this, that homicide happened, was one of the hot spots targeted at the meeting, saying, "This is where the complaints are coming." In. You know, unfortunately, now we have uh, yeah, we lost his life. One of those yeah. I'd like to say the good as well as the bad. Uh, 
Sergeant Lehman came over and shook my hand and apologized for his take on a particular person that was a continuous noise making apartment. Since I spoke about it a couple of months ago, there's been more than one time that she's done it again until my daughter stopped and had a long, long, long conversation with her. But I kind of knew that this lady wasn't going to be as nice to the uh, uh, Sergeant Lima. <laughs> you just got rid of him. But uh, she, uh, she says she wasn't aware that it, uh, it was disturbing to other people. So well, she's, she didn't say stop, Janet? No, I don't know. This yeah. just happened last week. Oh, okay. But okay. Uh, she has no right to say she had no idea. And that time when she wanted to know who it was that reported her, it wasn't because she wanted to say thank you. She wanted to know who it was. You know, my daughter told her, she said, right through the firewall, she said, it's as though the bricks are going to crumble. So she's well aware of it. So thank you, Sergeant Lima, for a run. Thank you, too, because I get mixed up quite a bit. I get called Captain quite a bit. It will be yeah, okay. I'm going to be called the doctor. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that title. <laughs> I believe that Dr. Lima was buffaloed by that young woman. That's right. That's true. That was For a package store, is it in their requirements that they have to card the buyer? It, I think if you're under the age of, is it? 30. Is it 30? It's 27? That's for ID. Yeah, if you're going to be under the age of 27, we're able to go about for age 27? Yeah. This is like stumpy panel today. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like tough questions today. But you, you do have to ask the other the, uh, proprietor that does. And there is an age for cigarettes. The age for cigarettes. And what if they don't have, can they lose their license permanently? Well, they, yeah, they, they, they could face a suspension, but they have a right to have a hearing. Before the, well, these, uh, to me, these suspensions are too lenient. Once you're open the door. Well, you know, it's just like a slap on the wrist. And then they, a couple of months later, they're doing it again. Is there a place that you have complaints on, or? Just mean in general. I want to talk in to general. You. Okay. Doctor, did you know what Janet gets carded everywhere she goes? Every place. <laughs> 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 I know it's a rat. I know it's a rat. What kind of thing do you call it? Does anybody come in to talk about the nuisance law? I mean, I wrote a brief story on it. On the nuisance law, it says, how do you guys feel about it? And you know what it and you have to use some responsibilities to what they can do. Well, Sergeant Lima and I actually went up and testified mm -hmm. in, in favor of it. Uh, we're, we're supporters of it. We believe it will be, certainly be helpful. Did you read it? Did it based on you writing on tickets? And then yeah, we have this responding? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, some people in the room actually responded also. Yeah, uh, it, yes. Uh, some of the other people. Yeah, I was going to ask you something else. Somebody and I were uh, talking about the noise audience. I think I'm right, but correct me if I'm not. Uh, when you uh, go to a party and you decide that you're going to give them a fine, is it only the person whose apartment it is that gets the fine and possibly the landlord, or is it everybody at the party? Make a meeting dull. It's the landlord. It's, it's, Just yeah, it's the person who has the party. And, yeah, and then if it's like a sublease thing and just that. First it's the tenant and then it goes afterwards. You get a hundred dollar yeah. fine and then it goes to three hundred. But just that one person gets the fine. Under that ordinance. Yeah. We were making noise one night, that's how it came about the story. But that doesn't mean everybody it has less. to get huh? That doesn't mean it can't make the less. It means that's oh, yeah, the yeah. after the fact yeah. the yeah, my so cross and that that's arrest that's requires paperwork. And, and the paperwork goes into how much time, guys? You tell me. Oh, is it the, probably two hours? Okay. Literally two hours to process them, because you have to book them. You know, for you have one to person, or, or, or if there's 10 people involved, does two hours we-, we I'd say two hours- For per, per person? For, well, for the one person. If, the paperwork's gonna be similar, because you're doing all the same for the names, just add them in. But to process them, 
So if you had a large arrest, a group arrest, 10 people, it would be four or five hours. Easily. Easily. So does that make like it like I'm 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 being a straight shooter. Yeah. Does that sort of like turn you guys off from wanting to go in and do the job because you realize how much paperwork well, it's not the is paperwork. involved? It's not the paperwork, but put it this way, on a Friday, Saturday night, I don't have an open cell in District A one. Right? The rooms are full. If you get my breath. Yeah. Right? Yes. No room at the end. They're all in there. We got them lined up already with people arrested for felonies. Truthfully. Serious people we don't want out. We get some, these kids or whatever they are that, that are acting up, a lot of them have no criminal record. I'd rather give them a fine a lot of times than bring them in. Do we bring them in sometimes? Sure, they're disturbing the peace you're talking about here when they refuse to knock it off right in our presence. Yeah, they're going to come down for a trip to the station. We're going to book those. But most of them, we do believe in giving them that uh, city ordinance violation first. And we do go to court with them. That was a follow up. But, but am I correct by saying there is a lot of paperwork? Yeah, there's a lot of paperwork. Yeah, correct well, by only saying Only because yeah. of the policemen I know that they, I, they tell me there is a lot of paperwork involved. And sometimes I know it could be draining to get into the paperwork, which may discourage. That's why I said I think it's worth it to give each policeman who's going to bring in these people that are causing problems in the area, $25 per person, because it may be an incentive to you guys to get money for doing a job that the city thinks you should be doing, but I think it's like sometimes may be going over and above what actually should be done, because I believe the police, the fire department, and the meter maids have a harder job than any office job in the city of Boston. So that's why I think they should be rewarded for what they're doing. And they said, oh no, it can't be done. Well, you know what? There's plenty of things that have been done in the city. They're, they're looking to give a more liquor license when you guys have made it very clear that the more liquor license that have been given out, the more problems they're going to be, and they're still looking to push them. So. I mean, how corrupt is the city? Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's no end to that, so, you know. I mean, more liquor license, 90, over 90 liquor licenses and a one mile square radius. Not that I'm putting you guys on the spot, but I mean, I saw the mayor the other day. I didn't say anything to him. I think it was yesterday or the day before because I really wanted to go for his jugular vein, but he just came out of the hospital, so I was being kind and never said a word. Definitely, area one includes not only the North End, but what other Boston neighborhoods are in for those that don't know? Just curious. We include, <laughs> just digesting that last time. Uh, <laughs> uh, we do include the North End, Beacon Hill, yes. uh, Downtown Crossing, the Theater District, out of the Back Bay, we go over to Charlestown, as we mentioned, the Leather District. Um, uh, the West End. The West End. Chinatown, Bay Village, Park Plaza, Waterfront. The Farm and the Public Gardens, they're, they're almost neighborhoods unto themselves. Yeah, it's all A1. We have uh, a lot of residents. Uh, they told us that it was the BRA had it, told us that we have something like 10,000 new units being built just in the uh, downtown bid area. Think of that. Took a couple of thousand where they were yeah. not safe. You got North State, yeah, not even Clue Mills, Billy. They don't they think they'll be in North Station I mean, yes. We're gonna have our residents are keep keep increasing, you know, our permanent residents are what with that on the horizon since you already know that that's happening, does that mean there are already plans in place to okay, we know we have no choice, we're gonna have to hire mm -hmm. X amount of we we make our our staffing request based on what, what we see. Yeah. So we, we do put it out there that we based on that, and also based on call points. It's a very, very busy district. Anyone that listens to that, please read it, please hear it. We'll hear those cars go. It's, oh, you know. I made the case before, you know, I think it's reasonable that we receive an increase in staffing based on what, you know, what we're reporting, but there's other neighborhoods that have uh, different challenges. A lot of our issues are our quality of life related, what we deal with uh, from our Beacon Hill, from our North End, from our, from our neighbors and other areas have violent crime, which we're lucky that we don't have the violent 
Right, I think so. You always have to balance your resources citywide to be on you know, police commissioner and, and, and the mayor. But I think it's bad for us to ask, and I do ask them to make sure that we receive additional uh, resources. At the uh, the last meeting, um, like there was a question about a, a motor vehicle accident that uh, myself and Teddy, we did not have a copy of that report, and as we always say that, we don't have a copy of the report for all the reports that we bring to the meeting and all the reports that we bring on the 5 crimes and whatever arrest we had, and I think there was a question about a motor vehicle accident at Prince and Hanover as to what the police response was, and I'm just gonna be brief with this. It was on the 17th of November, 2.30 a.m. The officers responded and did speak to the driver of that vehicle who actually states in the report that she took a right onto Prince Street from Salem and swerved out of the way of a pedestrian that basically jumped out in front of the car. And that's when she struck vehicle number one and two. I did speak with the officers who said there was no level of intoxication. I know we went back and forth on that, but again, you know, people do have questions about police reports. You know, we will do a follow up and bring it back to the meeting. I think we spent this several minutes uh, talking about that. We should, please do a follow-up on that because the person that was witnessing this whole situation that was on Front Street said that supposedly this person was drunk. Yes, I think there should definitely be a follow-up on that. Yeah. Because if you could smash two or three cars up the street, then I'll do whatever you want. Right? And just uh, say I was over and uh, that was it. It happened. <laughs> yes. I'm saying it the way it is. I speak from my heart and that's it. Welcome. And I don't condone bug spray. <laughs> 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 <laughs>